Hello, friends, enemies, colleagues, acquaintances. Ladies, fish, gentlemen, everyone else. Welcome! Our list today is a 20 through 11 of our top songs. Great! Start us off, John. Number 20 oh, is no. <laughs> One Big Holiday <laughs> by My Morning Jacket. Intro kills me in rock band. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, beautiful guitar intro, a little the chiming sounds of spring coming in mm -hmm. and then just like this great big jam it's kind of it's an interesting structure and in that's kind of like the first two minutes are a jam then there's like the song, two verses yeah. yeah and then like back to a jam a like big building explosive jam through the ending just very like very maybe the most cheerful song in my top 20 just very <laughs> positive electric great guitar sounds one one that just didn't make it for me was Gideon. Oh, yeah. Another great song, another great big guitar tone. Yeah, that one's a lot more, like, moody and space and great. Very thick space, you have to swim through it. My number 20. Uh, nice guitar tone in a different direction. This is Street Spirit, parentheses, Fade Out uh. by Radiohead. Um, this was on my list last time. Moved up further, perhaps somewhat because of the uh, artist limit, but somewhat because it's just a very, very hauntingly beautiful song. When I first heard it, I just kind of like stopped in my tracks for the full time the song happened. Just like, I, I, I feel like maybe I was, I feel like I was maybe playing a board game with you or something, and I was just like, jeez, you know? <laughs> just very much like it just, it just hangs on to you. It doesn't let go until, you know, kind of that last haunted oh, fade out. So you out. heard it relatively recently. Yes. And I, I think I, I feel like I may have heard it once or twice in the early years, but just like everything works really well. The guitar is beautiful. The vocals work really well. Just want to like just ghostly song. Just don't listen to the Avenged Sevenfold cover. Fade out! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This, this exists, or it's some artist it's like, like that. What about the gray, gray men? Us gray men or something. I yeah. don't know. Ugh. They don't deserve to have their name gotten right. So there. Uh, my number 19 is Hammerhead by The Offspring. A little less happy than your yes. number 20. <laughs> a little less Maybe equally unhappy to your 20 in a different way. This is kind of ambiguous. Might be about a school shooting. Might be just some, something bad's going on. Oh, it's definitely about a school definitely shooting. Definitely about a school shooting, yeah. He's like deluding himself into thinking he's a soldier. Yeah. Well, I think, or maybe he, I'm thinking more he, like, was a soldier. And then... And mm. then, like, he comes back and he's kind of, like, PTSD'd and he's doing the stuff. Whatever the case, he's got an image of a soldier in his mind as he, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, but I, there's also kind of some, probably some war crime elements there. Like, I guess that I'm just doing what I was told could be his delusions. I was also picturing it as, like, him doing war crimes in Iraq. We got that magic eye hat yeah. in here again. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> but either way, yet, yeah, um, yeah, like just built around this unusually great dark offspring. Yeah, yeah, unusually. Oh no, they're always like, they're both the they're, vocals they're are usually that dark. They're not that dark. Like, come out and play is about like gang violence in the classroom. True, I guess. The kids yeah. aren't all right is about how all the people from his neighborhood are dead, pregnant, in jail, etc. <laughs> They, they've they got a fair amount of stuff. I, I mean, they definitely have that goofy side, and they yeah. also, I guess, have that dark side. That's true. Now Pretty that fly for a white do. guy. <laughs> Not so much, self esteem, yeah. I'd say, too. Like, maybe that's a little bit of both. <laughs> uh, yeah, self, yeah, self esteem, more of like, yeah, just kind of the relationship song. But And of course, their uh, darkest song yet, uh, Bumping in My Cruising Truck. California, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but anyway, the, this yep. is just <laughs> built around a, like, big, big riff, the bam, 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 bam. That two-parter. And then, like, for all of the kind of, like, darkness of the lyrics is maybe one of my favorite songs to air drum to as well. It just, like, it kind of does, like, a part A and a part B, like, for the second half of it. And the transition is great. It, like, slow, it, like, quiets down with, like, the bass, and then just explodes into this, like, big, thing. like, thing. And just amazing song. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think we're about to get even darker, <laughs> but in a metal direction. That's one, my Metallica. Yes, I'm pretty sure this is darker than a Hammerhead. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, hard to I say. I guess it depends what you find more depressing, like a school shooting or like a man a with no senses or limbs, being shot or a man, individual man, like in a horrifying purgatory. I mean, just think about what that must be like. I actually don't for too long. No, I'm, I'm good. Gonna... <laughs> 
But yeah, but masterpiece yeah. of a song. Um, far and away, I mean, amazing metal song, amazing song generally. Just the, the, the way they approach the topic is really unique and haunting. The... The guitar, great. The parts throughout, great. When I first heard this, my dad put this on... I'll never stop telling the story. My dad put this on a mix CD for me one time. He wanted to show me just like, like 90s and 80s music at some point. Because I was very into the 60s and 70s. Just and go ahead now. Just go ahead now. For some doom, reason, doom, it's doom, a doom. DJ mashup. What do you know? No, the one and, ends and the next starts. Okay, fair enough. That's why but, I was um, doing the ending. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, that came on, and the part where you get to the... It came on. I dropped my headphones. I was a Walkman. Ran to the other side of the room. I was like, this song is scary! <laughs> and you know what the next song was? The next song was Short Skirt, Long Jacket by Cake. <laughs> I kind of wonder if that order was done semi-intentionally. Maybe that's why you like short skirt, long jacket it so was a much, because you associate it with a uh, safety relief and from comfort. The... <laughs> yeah. That's totally possible. But yeah, that's one. All right, this next one isn't one, it's 18. And it is the perfect encapsulation of noir in a song, yeah. watching the detectives by Elvis Costello, which that you correctly so predicted. Great. And this is just, I feel like there's... I'm sure if you took the elements of it, you'd be able to say, like, you know, it's kind of a ska or reggae beat or something. But really, like, if you just take the, the song as a whole, there's, like, nothing that sounds quite like it. Like, it's just it's like so spy menacing. Ska. Yeah, like, spy ska. It's so, like, menacing. It's just got that, like, the creepy guitar sound, just, like, the everything about it. And then Elvis Costello, was, he does a lot of things amazingly, but he is perfectly 100% suited to sing this one. Mm -hmm. And he's just like kind of singing all these like this kind it's of like again. cop yeah. show like noir pastiche of lyrics and just an amazing mood setting song. Like a little wordplay etc going on in it. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. My number 18 is... Hanger 18? No. <laughs> my number 18 is Going Underground by The Jam. I was trying to find out, figure out a way to uh, connect these in, in, in terms of uh, how to transition between one and the one other. It, it didn't... Watching the detectives sorry, go I underground. I thought you liked Town Called Malice more. Going Underground is far and away my favorite. Town Called Malice probably my second. Hard to say, but nothing really beats the energy of this one. Yeah. The, pow, pow, pow. The, the, the sheer just like... This is another one that just kind of grabs you by the... Grabs you by the lapels and just doesn't let you go until the end of the song and just... There's no room to breathe in this one either. A bit like apply some pressure yeah. way back on the list. The lyrics are great. The delivery is great. All of the instruments are great. Bass stands out wonderfully. All of it. It's brilliant yeah, punk. Great, great drums too. Mod punk, I guess. Great yeah. just like the... Furiously, and the public gets what the public wants. I don't want what the society gets. Yep, fun little wordplay there, too. <laughs> All right, my number 17 is Metropolis Part 1 by Dream Theater. Uh, we're back in Prague pretension land to the extent that they released a whole concept album to be Metropolis Part, part two. 2. which And I assume they good. wrote this without knowing that they were going to do that, so they just have this random Part 1. Very uh, Coheed and Cambria of them. Um, this is kind of one of many great songs on images and words, but this one just has the best sense of atmosphere for me. There's, it kind of has this like quiet twilight opening. A crap ton going on throughout. A whole lot of different things going on. The segment where the band breaks. Yeah. <laughs> I know Mia, Mia's a big fan of that part. I don't even dislike it. It's just I gotta always point it out when it comes up in a rock band. A lot of great riffs thrown in and then just the... The ending is so kind of like climatic and final that it's fantastic. And what do they do with the final line of that? Took it to a uh, really confusing instrumental on Metropolis Part 2. <laughs> Why? Because they're dream theater. I don't know. I don't know, Mia. I think their fans love uh, that instrumental. I think you're going to get some uh, eggs with dream theater written on them <laughs> thrown at you. Oh, I know I am. Like, it's like, look at all the time. Signatures. Oh, there's a tomato with a little carving of James Labrie's face. That's very Aww, that's intricate adorable. for the fact they were playing that's to have it just out. smash into your skull. Really, you really dedicated. You wouldn't even have been it. able to see My the goodness. writing on it. Why'd they take the time? What, the, what a bummer, really. They really got his uh, forehead lines down. Masterpiece of I don't even know what he looks like. <laughs> Neither do I. 
I still, You've seen everyone them. has four headlines. Yeah, but I don't remember what people look like. Well, I don't know how a uh, one set of four headlines differ from the other. So, yeah, um, there's I don't that. know. <laughs> What's next, my black-haired friend? Oh right, okay. You're you have you're yeah. Like I said, I don't know what people look like. Wasted years by Iron Maiden, continuing the metal <laughs> theme. I've me I've mentioned this song before in. Uh, the, the, the metal list, the, 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 the metal list, the, oh. um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great glorious sing-along, this is another, I'm gonna be saying this a lot, all the instruments are on fire, now they're <laughs> literally on fire perhaps if you watch an Iron Maiden concert though, I mean, if maybe everyone's being swallowed in flames, you don't know, Eddie the mascot comes out and I don't know, as, as a firefighter he starts putting everything out, you can totally see this happening, can't yeah. you? Yes. <laughs> This one is the, yeah. This one is definitely great. It almost feels like it's like one step towards like a mainstream like hair metal song, but not. It's still completely Iron Maiden. It's still like, Iron Maiden. It feels Maiden. like there's a world where it was a big hit for them. It, it feels like it should be a big hit, and I think it's a fan favorite. But like, it feels like it should be a bigger hit than it was. Now that you mention it. Because it's even like they're not singing. They're taking a break from singing about history and medieval kings and executions and they're kind of like they're saying more know, about carpe about, diem yeah, here yeah life on the road and that type of thing etc all right my number 16 is uh you're welcome for all the effort it took to write this this is if you tolerate this your children will be next ah. <laughs> by manic street <laughs> preachers and this is uh just what a, this is kind of in a very similar vein to street spirit it's kind of just this big anthemic kind of sad song very very like wistful Massive, yeah. especially when you get to the bridge about the old man cuttings of his glory days you have to kind of like peak uh peak wistfulness i guess they're, they're coming they have kind of a different lens than radiohead radiohead are more like this kind of like the walls closing in on them this is more like they're kind of trying to urge Tell you people. to like fight back against friends in society and get that outside the thing. damn walls yeah, Your children there's... will be in the walls next if you don't take care of this. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes I forget what what just what a good band this is. Just like the great guitar tones, fantastic vocal. Yeah. Just all the way around. Yeah, I can't hear this one without singing along with it. We'll be next. We'll be next. We'll be next. And what is your sixteen? And... <laughs> <laughs> really? Yep. Wow! 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 And <laughs> number sixteen surprised me with how high it got, but here we are anyway. It is "The Fallen" by Franz Ferdinand, one of the most brilliant sets of lyrics ever written, and I'll stand by it. And I am fully aware that this is not an upper echelon lyricist or anything like that, but I do think they are wickedly underrated as just like commentators. I love this song to bits. I, I obviously have a bit of a personal bias. Because this is coming from a person, this was written by a person who studied divinity and then um, is, is now writing this kind of Aqualung style criticism of Christianity organized wise. And just, I, I just using all these incredibly clever, like religious draws, like the, you know, the, the fish and the unleavened and the, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Just the prophets of Tesco. It can be a prophet or it can be a prophet. Get it? You know? Nah. Yeah. But the, the, the delivery's great. Uh, Franz Ferdinand, fantastic band. Nothing really like them. Yeah. All right, my, we'll be right back to you because my 15 is Going Underground, which we just saw Aye. from you. Okay. Number 15 is Good Times, Bad Times by Led Zeppelin. Their very first single, one of their most um, succinct. <laughs> yes. That's a lot packed into that three minutes there. The vocals are great. The guitar riff and solo are fantastic. The little bass breaks, I just love them. What I mean, does he whisper in your ear? Did we ever find out? I don't think we ever do. I remember coming across a advertised children's book about classical composers. It was entitled "Good uh, the Classical Composers: Good Times, Bad Times, and What the Neighbors Thought." And I just remembered going, "Is this really the most appropriate thing to title a children's <laughs> book?" You know what they're, <laughs> you know what the neighbors, you know what the neighbors are thinking about, right, author? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but 
but fantastic song. And that there's a band that emerges really fully formed right there. I mean, that's their first ever song to the public. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Gring! You know? Hey, we're Zeppelin. We're not going anywhere for quite a while. Really, <laughs> everyone's sounding great on there. Mm -hmm. I love that kind of, like, not fake ending, but just, like, pause for a second, then suddenly there's the guitar solo. That, that's a nice punch in the head. Over the Hills and Far Away just missed my list. That's also a fantastic song. Yeah. All right, my number 14 is Killing in the Name by Rage Against the Machine. Rage Again! And this Super is... Machine. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and this, this is just, uh, you know, it's such a famous song at this point. There's not too much to say about it. Just like a pure shrine to justified righteous anger. Uh, you can't not want to rage along with the big fuck you, I won't do what you tell me ending, you know... This another one. You know, if you can get me to karaoke this, you should. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't done that in front of me yet, have you? Maybe not. Not at a bar. I mean, no. we've, we, we've covered it together. Yeah, yeah. So that counts for something. We'll but... have to break that out live again. You sound good on that one, yeah. Yeah, I think Killing a Name probably is the best Rage Against the Machine song, even if I like Sleep Now in the Fire more. So I think, ob but I think an objective sense like this one takes it. Yeah, this is one of those songs, like, it's so good I can only hear it so often because I kind of got to save it for, like, the right moment. It's like, you got you to, gotta, like, fully concentrate on it. I know what you mean. That's, that's what a lot of these songs in this top 20 or so do to me. Like, okay, wait, hang, hang on, I got I to gotta, I gotta take, like, I'm walking to work and the song isn't over yet. All right, take a loop around the block. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Number 14, talk about, once again, packing a lot and do a little. It is threes and sevens by Queens of the Stone Age. To mm. me, this is really a perfect four minute song. Just everything is in there. You got the, you got the intro and the, once again, it kind of pauses for a second and it goes wee -wee 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 -wee. And, the, and, and the lyrics are great and it does the big bridge and then it quiets down the big ending. And it's just like, it's like four minutes long and yet you kind of feel like it should be eight, but it doesn't feel long enough to be eight. I don't know how to describe it. There's just, this is how you write a song, a rock song. I don't know. Yeah, no argument there. G definitely a good one. Probably even not even by, <laughs> by top ten by them, but I definitely like it. I'd like to thank Rock Band. Rock Band's lyrics, better versions, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they, they really should have used, used that, that for the studio. Damn yeah. it. But anyway. <laughs> My number 13 is Power and the Passion by Midnight Oil. Uh, and this is just that... Yeah. I use this is too much. <laughs> This is, this is not a parable. This, this is a terrible. This is not a terrible song. Uh, and this is kind of like the big, the big hit off their fantastic album, 10987654321. You gotta say it like that every time. <laughs> you gotta say it like that every time. And this is kind of, this song is very like tropical and 80s. But it's kind of, it's tropical and 80s and mixed with manner. kind of like, yeah, vicious kind of, a lot of the things just kind of about kind of Australia's relationship with America and just like the tourists and things like that. Um, but like, you know, whatever it's about, it's so, such a memorable, catchy song. It's got such a great beat to it. It's got this big like trumpet ending suddenly, kind of just like almost orchestral. It's just, a, it's got kind of the weird drum solo in the middle and then when things come back, it's kind of everything's like heightened a notch for the third verse. And yeah, just fantastic song. I always love watching you when you do this in rock band, the, the solo. Just a little bit you're trying to get, yep. <laughs> yeah, I do it lightly or you'll knock over the camera on the table Let's hear number 13. All right, my number 13 <laughs> is uh, we saw this band earlier on John's list, but not this song. This is Locomotive Breath by Jethro Tull. The piano intro, the riff, the scathing lyricism, the flipping flute solo, where midway through the flute solo, you hear him panting into the flute because he's playing it so hard. <laughs> The, the the classical sensibilities, how it still is very much a rock song. Gah! It's a good song. It's a stinking good song. That's all there is. My there number 12, another, a lot of these, uh, 
artist overlap with Mia's recent folks. This is my Queens of the Stone Age pick, and this is Song for the Dead. Figured that would be right. <laughs> and this makes it on here because it is my absolute all-time favorite song to drum. There are just so many great different parts to it. Really, maybe Dave Grohl's drum masterpiece. He's done a lot of great drum work for a lot of different bands, but this is probably my favorite of all of it. And as he's my favorite drummer, that would make it my favorite drum song. I was and gonna say, is it your favorite drum performance to listen to as well, or? I think so, yeah. And at this point, it's hard to separate the two because usually if I'm hearing something, I want to be playing it. Fair enough. Um, but this is the, just everything else on this song is great too. It's kind of, it's definitely a song that's not really about lyrics or vocals. Like the guitar and the drums definitely take the stage. The vocals are almost more like an instrument on it, kind of. That's just Mark like, Lanigan again. Yep, yep Mark Lanigan. <laughs> Mark Lanigan. Again. Uh, and it's just this kind of like... The screaming tree. <laughs> yep. That's <laughs> a very, another very adrenaline-filled song. It's definitely kind of the sound of just like something dark happening out in the desert and you know, they're hauling some bodies away. And I mean, they're I guess. trying to make a fast run for the, for the Mexican border to escape justice. That's what they're really doing, traveling to the Joshua Tree. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, my number 12 is stuck to number 11. Hang on. My number 12, once again, is a surprise to me, but it is One Way or Another by Blondie. Huh. If only, really, the, I think the thing that made it rise up quiet as high as it did is the whole final section and just how many chills it gives me. Just, like, the way the drums come in and then, like, the manic keyboard and you just get the sense that you're in this situation that Debbie Harry is describing and you're like wondering if you're gonna live to see the next day and it just it just reminds me of just like being kept up at night wondering like is this guy gonna find me <laughs> like that's the, that's the sound of what's in your head but like the riff is great the vocals are great you know once again <laughs> yeah the instruments are all on fire they're great they're, they're on, great. Fire. They're on this fire is uh... this is not a parable or a terrible song <laughs> yeah Okay, and my number 11, my final one for this, is Perfect Water by Blue Oyster Cult. You had some internal memes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but this, what a beautiful song. It's oh, kind yeah. of like just the, it's from their kind of 80s period where they're a little less hard rock, a little less riff focused, but it still is just, they're still, the thing with them is they kept their like kind of solo tone on. So there's a lot of just, nice little guitar licks, guitar fills, big solos. And for the, the big kicker of this one is kind of like, the verses are pretty, but then it goes into kind of like the down, 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 down. There's something like in that sound of like the chorus, they take a while to get to it. And I think they just go to it like in the middle Beautiful and then again throughout. for like a big ending. And it's just kind of something about that melody and that like sound on that chorus, like, like drag grabs like a chunk of my brain. Uh, the, then, the the whole yeah. the whole tone of the song really captures the the water theme well. Just like those guitars always remind me of swimming through the tide. Yeah, yeah, and I I like a lot of water theme things, and this is like yeah, like a sharks. song much in that vein. Like sharks, also there are a lot of sharks in our apartment. Uh, <laughs> there are literally. <laughs> yeah, like this one. And so that certainly helps it get <laughs> that high up. A lot of other great songs by Blue Oyster Cult that could be this high too. What's your number 11? I highly doubt we're going to go John's top 10 without seeing this guy. This is Jungle Land by Bruce Springsteen. In fact, we're going to see that song, so we will call it here. <laughs> all right. That's all, folks. Bam, 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 bam. See you next time.